Well, it is really great to be here with everybody right now. And uh, I thought I'd let people get into the room with uh, one of my latest musical offerings. This is the Calvin Cycle Rap. So come on in. And um, for folks who are watching, just please share where are you and uh, what kind of class are you and so on and so forth. So just send me a couple of comments letting me know where you are. Thanks a lot. And we'll just listen to a couple of tunes while people get into the room. We'll give people a minute or two to be there. So thank you so much. All right, we're going to bring that to a close and move into this live review of photosynthesis. I am so grateful to all of you who have chosen to join me tonight. Um, there are other possibilities for learning B-I-O-L-O-G-Y, some of which involve big, heavy textbooks, but some of which are a lot more fun, and I hope I can provide that tonight. So um, it's just great to have you here. And um, here's some questions and topics that we'll be addressing tonight. What happens during photosynthesis? What are the inputs? What are the outputs, etc.? What are the two phases of photosynthesis? What does chlorophyll do? What's the absorption spectrum? What's the action spectrum? And I'm just going to pause and say thank you to Sky for that beautiful comment. And if there are others of you watching, please, please go ahead and chime in. When I see those comments appear on the screen, it's like sunlight that's powering my chloroplasts and my synthesis of ATP. I'm probably pushing that a little bit too far. Um, and what are the light reactions and what are the Calvin cycle? So that is our agenda for tonight. I did promise that if anybody had any questions, that that would be stuff that would go at the top of the show. And um, maybe I won't be able to get to those tonight, but if you pose questions, comments, I'll make them the basis of the next show. I'm pretty much thinking of using this time slot Tuesday, 7 p.m. PST, as one of the times that I can be with you on YouTube to talk about biology. And if that's a good time, why don't you just put in the comments right now, yeah, Mr. W, let's do it. Something like that would, again, really power my ATP synthesis. I um, want to emphasize that while I'm going to try and make the next hour as valuable as I can, that really the best way for you to learn biology is online at my website, learn-biology.com. I created it for my own students at Berkeley High School and tested it extensively with them. Over the years, it's been used with up to 25,000 students and about 1,200 teachers. It is the best way, the most fun way, the most interactive way <clears throat> to learn biology. So please, please uh, go ahead and you can uh, sign up for a free trial. It's uh, at, oh, it's on the screen at learn-biology.com slash AP biology. So best way to study biology. And Sky, I know that you're there. So just uh, let me know, how's my audio doing? Can you hear me okay? Just uh, post a comment in there, letting me know. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and talk about another offering, which is my Biomania AP Bio app. And that runs on Android. It runs on Google Play. And it's um, basically AP Bio Gold in your pocket. So 
go ahead and Momo, I'm hearing okay. So that's really what I needed to know. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's fantastic. So let's go on and let's learn some more about photosynthesis. Yeah, here's the thing that I just meant to say. It's on the App Store, it's on Google Play. And if you just download it from the App Store and Google Play, you get units two and six. I'm talking about units two and six of AP Biology. I'm talking about cell structure and function and uh, gene expression and regulation. So all the stuff related to DNA, RNA, protein, all that stuff. So uh, that's for free and you'll try it out and you'll see that it's the best way to learn biology. It basically lets you take LearnDash Biology on the go. Not completely, it's sort of a subset of the material we have on learn-biology.com. Um, In-app purchase unlocks the rest, but really the best detail, excuse me, the best deal in town is uh, learn-biology.com. We're offering a limited time monthly subscription. It is $24.95 per month. Use it for as long as you want. We won't allow free trials when we get right to the AP bio exam, but you can try it out for two weeks for free right now and see if you like it. And I can assure you that you will. Um, so um, to put this lesson together, I drew upon my many years of experience as an AP biology teacher, um, all at Berkeley High School in Berkeley, California, one of the greatest places on earth to live. And um, I, as part of my experience as an AP bio teacher, looked really intensely at the College Board's course and exam description and really developed a course that was extremely congruent with that outline. But that outline, if you're studying, is hard to use, real hard to use. So I've put together a student-friendly version of an AP bio outline that you can access at apbiosuccess.com slash ap-bio-outline. Do that type it in, take a screenshot of this screen, watch it later, whatever you need to, and download the outline. You can study from that. And it'll also have links to all of the relevant tutorials for every topic on learn-biology.com. So time to start doing the thing to do photosynthesis. We're gonna start with the big picture and the light reactions of photosynthesis. And again, I wanna let you know the beauty of this uh, kind of Forum is its interactivity. So at any point, if you have a question, go ahead, stop me, weigh in. I really want to hear what you have to say, and I want to respond to your questions. So photosynthesis is a beautiful and complex topic. If you have questions, stop me, and we'll talk about it. All right. So I would like to figure out how to get rid of this banner on the bottom of the screen. And I think if I go like that, it's going to go away. Fantastic, got the whole screen. So here we are. Um, what happens during photosynthesis? What's its chemical equation? Is it endergonic or exergonic? Here's what happens during photosynthesis. Using light energy, photoautotrophs combine carbon dioxide and water to create carbohydrates. Oxygen is a waste product. An autotroph is an organism that can feed itself, a self feeder. A photoautotroph is one that does that using light. There's another kind of autotroph called a chemoautotroph, but we don't have to worry about it right now. So what photoautotrophs do is in this kind of photoautotrophy, that's a great word, they take in carbon dioxide and water. Plants absorb carbon dioxide through their leaves. They absorb water through their roots. And in the leaves, they combine that carbon dioxide with hydrogen uh, that's been gathered by the Calvin cycle and by the light reactions of photosynthesis actually, and they create carbohydrate. And that becomes the mass of the plant. They also, as a waste product, release oxygen. So why is photosynthesis important? It's the source of biomass, the base of almost every food chain. Here's the formula, C6O2 plus 6H2O plus light energy produces glucose and six oxygen, a balanced equation, but it's endergonic because even though it's balanced, what you can see is that it's organizing the universe. It's taking these 12 very low energy molecules and organizing them into a high energy product, which is glucose. And you can just do some counting 
six molecules plus six molecules, 12 molecules over here, and only seven on that side. You know, when you clean up your room, you take different piles and you organize them, you consolidate them. That's reducing entropy, reducing disorganization. It takes two low energy inputs, carbon dioxide and water, converts them into high energy product, glucose C6H12O6, reduces entropy. And there's the math that I just talked about. Highly unorganized carbon dioxide molecules are organized into carbohydrate. If you run your hand through the air, well, carbon dioxide is present at about 400 something parts per million. In other words, for every million molecules of gas, only 400 molecules of that are carbon dioxide. It used to be lower before the industrial revolution. It's climbing all the time due to um, human release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. But even at current levels, it's a highly diffuse substance. And then think about how concentrated the matter in this plant is. That's the kind of organizing power that photosynthesis has. That's why it's an endergonic reaction. And again, folks, um, please, at any moment, if there are any questions, please chime in. And uh, that's what really makes this activity alive and vibrant. Let's continue. When did photosynthesis first evolve? What are some consequences of photosynthesis? Here's an artist's depiction of the early earth. And based on fossil and chemical evidence, life um, emerged about 3.8 billion years ago, and photosynthesis was happening at about 3.5 billion years ago. Now, that's a 300 million year gap, but it's relatively soon after the emergence of life. Excuse me. <clears throat> the chemical evidence has to do with traces of certain kind of carbon that are associated with carbon dioxide. And you find those traces in fossilized uh, rocks that are essentially uh, derived from this. This is a structure called a stromatolite. It's a layered bacterial mat. And there are some that exist today, but there are some that go back 3.5 billion years. When you section them and you polish them and you treat them so they can be viewed with an electron microscope, you find structures like this. Those are essentially bacterial filaments. Pretty clear evidence that photosynthesis was happening early on. Well, why was that important? Oxygen production created the oxygen-rich atmosphere, making aerobic respiration possible. First, carbon dioxide <clears throat> saturated the oceans. Um, there's so much fantastic stuff to talk about. But eventually, that oxygen in the atmosphere created the ozone layer, which made life on land possible. You have so much to thank photosynthesis for. Your very atoms are a product of photosynthesis. The air you breathe, at least the oxygen in it, is a product of photosynthesis. What are the two phases of photosynthesis and what does each phase accomplish? First, there's the light reactions. So they're organized on the left side of this highly stylized chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are the organelles that carry out photosynthesis. We'll meet them in more detail later. What do these uh, chloroplasts do? What do the light reactions do? They convert light energy into chemical energy. Here's light energy over here. It's being converted into chemical energy. That chemical energy is in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. It's the molecule that living things use to get work done. And NADPH, NADPH is an electron carrier. Um, electron carriers, are in many places in biology. This one happens to be a mobile electron carrier, which means that it can move electron energy around the cell. You can think of it as a rechargeable battery. And as NADPH, that's the charged form that can deliver reducing power. I'll get into the details of all of that later. The Calvin cycle is the second phase of photosynthesis, and it converts the chemical energy in NADPH and ATP into carbohydrates. And as it does that, it fixes carbon dioxide. If you draw with charcoal after you're done drawing, you use a fixative. I was sort of indicating spraying. And what that does is it takes the um, charcoal that would otherwise fall off the paper and it fixes it in place. Well, what carbon dioxide 
what happens to carbon dioxide in photosynthesis is it gets fixed. Instead of being a diffuse gas in the atmosphere, it becomes solid matter. That's the solid matter that makes up plants. And one trophic level away, it's the solid matter that makes up you. The stuff that you are made of went through this process. Describe the role of chlorophyll in photosynthesis. Explain the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll and other pigments. So chlorophyll is the pigment in photosynthesis that absorbs light energy. What's a pigment? Paint consists of pigments and other stuff. A pigment is something that reflects certain frequencies of light and absorbs others. Chlorophyll reflects green light. You see that green light in your eyes, but it absorbs other frequencies of light. The frequencies of light that it absorbs are these over here in the bluish part of the spectrum, and these over here in the red part of the spectrum. And this graph is an absorption spectrum graph. So it shows the amount of light energy that's absorbed. This is 100%. This is zero over here. So you can see that chlorophyll B absorbs about, I don't know, what is that, 80, 90% of light that's in this bluish part of the spectrum. It absorbs just over 50%, like 60% of, that's not chlorophyll A, excuse me, of the light that's in the reddish part of the spectrum. The diversity of these pigments is actually an adaptation because it creates a wider spectrum of light, a wider series of wavelengths of light that can drive the photosynthesis process forward. Um, note that chlorophyll has two forms, A and B, that absorb most in the blue and red, least in green. What's the difference between chlorophyll A and B? It's this functional group over here. You don't need to know the difference. I don't know the difference. I think it's a carbonyl group that substitutes for this methyl group, but I'm not really sure, and it doesn't really matter. Just know that a subtle difference in these chlorophylls creates a slightly different absorption spectrum. And there are other pigments that are involved in photosynthesis too. If you um, live in the East Coast, you see this fantastic, vibrant show of colors in the autumn. That's those other pigments that persist for a little while in leaves after the chlorophyll dies off and stops doing photosynthesis. So um, covered a little bit of material so far, and I'd love to know if there are any questions or just if everything's going okay. So you can just put a doing okay, Mr. W, in the comments or way to go or put a real question and that will lead to some kind of authentic dialogue between you and me. That's what I'm looking for. It's what I'm hoping for. What about the action spectrum? We talked about the absorption spectrum over here. There's another spectrum that's called the action spectrum. And that is how various light wavelengths drive photosynthesis. So in a well-known experiment that's done in AP bio classes and many other classes, you take spinach leaves and you uh, punch out little discs using a hole punch. And then you use a syringe to suck the air out of those discs. And then you immerse them in water that's got a little bit of baking soda, source of carbon dioxide in there. And what these leaf discs will do, because they're still alive, even though they've been punched out with a hole punch, is they'll carry out photosynthesis, they'll produce oxygen, and they'll rise to the surface. Well, Light is driving that reaction. No light, no floating, all right? So that's what I mean by driving the wavelengths. And the basic idea is that red light and blue light drive photosynthesis the most. This kind of yellow light over here drives photosynthesis very little. A very cool experiment was done in the 1800s by Thomas Engelman, who grew a filament of algae under light from a prism that separated the light into its various wavelengths. And then he observed the density of aerobic bacteria that lived outside various parts of the filament. And it turned out that huge numbers were able to live in the blue-violet part of the spectrum, huge numbers in the orange-red part of the spectrum, and relatively few in green. Why? That's because these cells over here that were being exposed to green light didn't produce much oxygen, and these were aerobic bacteria. And 
aerobic bacteria grew best in the blue and red part of the spectrum. Connect the structure of chloroplasts to the reactions of photosynthesis. So here we have a cross section of a leaf. Leaves are complex structures. This is kind of a sandwich of cells. So this is the top surface of the leaf. This is the bottom of the sur surface. And all these little brown ovals, those brown ovals represent chloroplasts. So they're sub cellular structures. They're organelles within leaves. I said that badly. They're organelles within plant cells that make up leaves. So you can see they're particularly dense over here and over here, less so down here, less so up here. So chloroplasts have an outer cell membrane. That's a complete phospholipid bilayer. And then they've got a whole nother phospholipid bilayer. Why do they have two? Because chloroplasts were once independent living things that were taken up by a very early eukaryotic cell. They were engulfed by that cell. They were engulfed by a vesicle. And ever since, chloroplasts have continued to have those two layers. Now, you know that that sort of double layer thing is extremely functional in mitochondria because it creates the intermembrane space. This isn't really functional in the same way. So this isn't, uh, as far as I know, a structural feature of chloroplasts. So it's truly a vestige of endosymbiosis. Um, chloroplasts have their own DNA. Why do they have their own DNA? Because they were once independent living cells. They have their own ribosomes for exactly the same reason. They have these disks that are called thylakoids, and they're stacked together into stacks that are called grana. Let's talk a little bit more about these. They're membrane-bound sacs. Those sacs contain the membrane-bound photosystems and chlorophyll for the light reactions of photosynthesis. And these stacks over here are organized in what's called a granum, or grana is plural. But if you know thylakoid for AP bio, that's pretty much everything you need to know. Surrounding the thylakoids, but inside the inner membrane, is an enzyme-rich fluid substance that's essentially the cytoplasm of the chloroplast, but we give it a special name. It's called the stroma, the cytoplasm of the chloroplast, and it contains DNA, ribosomes, and among other things, it's where the Calvin cycle occurs. What do the light reactions produce? Where do these reactions happen? What are the inputs and outputs? So what the light reactions do is they convert the energy in light into the chemical energy of NADPH, that mobile electron carrier that I told you about, and ATP, a molecule that you've come to know well. Where does this happen? It occurs in the thylakoids involving the thylakoid space and the thylakoid membrane. What are the outputs? Oxygen is an output, and also NADPH and ATP. Those are the outputs. What are the inputs? Light as an energy so source, water as a matter source, and the outputs of the Calvin cycle, NADP+. Plus, that's the low energy form of this electron carrier, and ADP and P. That's the low energy form of ATP. So again, before we go on, let me know if there's anything you need, if there's any way that I can be helpful, if there's anything I can clarify to make this a better, more lucid presentation. And not hearing anything or seeing anything, I'm going to move on. So what are the key structures involved in the light reactions? Let's get context first. So here's a chloroplast. These are thylakoid sacs organized into grana. Here's the thylakoid membrane over here. All right, so that's it. And this is now the phospholipid bilayer that we're representing as this blue line over here. So that sets the thing in context. And again, for wider context, this is in the cell of a leaf. The leaf is in a tree tree is in the ground, the 
ground is on the earth, the earth is in the solar system. Just kidding, we don't have to do all that. But that that is really the ultimate context of all this stuff. So um, M is a chloroplast, N and O are a grana and thylakoid membrane. Photosystems are these structures over here and over here. These are proteins with embedded chlorophyll molecules. They're highly, highly structured. They are structures that evolved to capture light energy and convert it into a flow of electrons. And that's what they, that's what I wrote right there. They convert light energy at letter A and D into a flow of electrons. They also split water molecules. Water we've talked about is one of the inputs for the light reactions. So what happens to water is that this part of the photosystem has a water oxidizing complex that rips electrons away from water. When water loses those electrons, it becomes an oxygen and protons. H2, that means two hydrogen nuclei. Each hydrogen nuclei, nucleus is a proton. So um, that's basically what those structures are in addition to an electron pathway. So that's starting over here. L, it's continuing B, it's continuing at E over here, and it's continuing at F. You can imagine this to be like a little wire that's running through the membrane of a thylakoid. And that wire is capable of allowing electrons to flow. Now, we know that in the many devices that we use in our lives, our phones, our computers, light bulbs, etc. A flow of electrons is used to power a device. This flow of electrons will do the same thing. It's mind-blowingly cool. Well, what are the devices that they power? Proton pumps that are shown over here. They pump protons into the thylakoid space, and then those protons diffuse through ATP synthase. Though this slide is really just designed to be an overview. Now let's get into the wondrous details. Describe how the light reactions of photosynthesis create ATP. I remember when I learned this, I was just so amazed and so delighted. So let's learn how this works, or maybe just review, because probably learned this months and months ago, and now we're just reviewing it. We're getting fresh in memory. And again, the best way to really get this into memory is to go to, I'm going to try a fast move here. There I am. Go to learn-biology.com to do that review, but we're not going to do that now. We're going to do this. I'm going to position myself right over here on the screen. And here's what you need to know. Describe how the light reactions to photosynthesis create ATP. So, Here's light. It's photo exciting with light, exciting. Um, the chlorophylls that are in photosystem two. Fun, somewhat cruel fact in um, biology at this level is that photosystem two comes before photosystem one in terms of electron flow. I mean, that's not that hard to remember. I've had students complain about that, but. Photosystem two comes first. You just have to memorize it. So the photoexcitation of chlorophyll in photosystem two leads to a flow of electrons. The actual details get, I think, into the quantum realm, but you don't need to know that for AP Bio. You just need to know that light stimulates these chlorophyll molecules. The chlorophyll molecules have a magnesium atom in the center with two electrons that are capable of jumping in terms of energy level. Well, they jump around from chlorophyll to chlorophyll. They finally get to this chlorophyll. It's called P6, excuse me. You know, what kind of meme is that going to become? Um, goes to P680, and P680 is called the reaction center. And the chlorophylls of P680 basically get boosted, but when their electrons get boosted, they get grabbed by a protein complex that's called an electron acceptor, a primary electron acceptor. So that oxidizes these chlorophylls. 
Oxidation is a loss of electrons. Well, where do those electrons go? They go along the electron transport chain. So the electron transport chain, again, it's the series of proteins that pass electrons from one to the next. And as they flow through proteins like PQ, cytochrome, and PC, their energy as they pass through this over here is used to pump protons from the stroma to the thylakoid space. Now, I probably didn't represent this particularly well, but there are more protons here than there are here. That means the pumping is going uphill. That means it's active transport. That means it requires energy. Where does the energy come from? From the flow of electrons. Where did the electrons ultimately come from? Well, chlorophyll was oxidized, but as soon as it's oxidized, this part of the photosystem pulls electrons away from water. So water is the ultimate electron donor in photosynthesis. We'll circle back to that. All of these protons are getting pumped from the stroma into the thylakoid space. And that creates a chemiosmotic gradient. Chemiosmosis is the name that a guy named Peter Mitchell gave to the process by which protons will follow their gradient and diffuse out of the thylakoid space back to the stroma. How do they do that? The phospholipid bilayer in these proteins are all impermeable to protons, but there is one channel, and that channel is called ATP synthase. These protons are extremely unhappy. We're going to put that in scare quotes here because they're all positively charged. They don't like being next to their positively charged other fellow protons whom they find repulsive. Literally, they are repelled by the other protons. And so they get out through the only gate they can, and that gate is ATP synthase. As they diffuse through ATP synthase, what happens? ATP synthase is not only a channel, it's also an enzyme, and it uses the kinetic energy of the fusing protons to power a very energy intensive reaction, the synthesis of ATP from ADP and phosphate. So that is how ATP is created. Capture light, create an electrical current, pump protons to an enclosed space, let those protons diffuse out through ATP synthase, which uses their kinetic energy to make ATP from ADP and phosphate. If that's not cool enough, note that way back over here, when this chlorophyll gets oxidized, this um, water oxidizing complex gets activated. I don't know the details of that, and neither do you, but um, this water molecule will be split apart into oxygen and protons. That enhances this gradient. It puts more protons over here, which increases the intensity by which protons will diffuse from the thylakoid space back to the stroma. We've now accounted for half of the products of the light reaction. The other half is NADPH, that mobile electron carrier. How does that get created? Well, light strikes photosystem one over here. It bounces around these chlorophylls until the energy arrives at P700. That's the reaction center of photosystem one. And that photosystem one, when it gets stimulated, sends electrons to another electron transport chain. But this one doesn't power proton pumping. What it does instead is it flows to the enzyme NADP plus reductase, the name of which tells you exactly what this thing does. It reduces NADP plus to NADPH. Reduction is gain of electrons. That means that this positive charge is gonna go away as electrons flow into the substance. In biology, electrons are usually accompanied by hydrogens, and that's why we have this H 
over here. So now we've created ATP and NADPH, the two products of the light reaction. Photosynthesis, so cool, starts with the light reactions. That NADPH is later going to flow into the Calvin cycle with terrific and amazing results. And that's what I just said. During the Calvin cycle, NADPH provides the electrons and hydrogens to reduce carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. How are we doing on time? It's 737. How are folks doing out there? Everybody enjoying this lesson? Anybody have any questions? Anybody want to um, share a thought or an idea or something like that? If you did, it would make me really wonderfully happy and uh, just uh, be great to know. There's a graphical representation of the light reactions of photosynthesis that's called the Z scheme. And if you took this structure and you kind of tilted it, you could see how it would be like a Z. I have actually always thought that it most obviously looks like an N, but I wasn't on the committee that named this process, which probably existed before I was born, which was a long time ago, long time ago. Is that right? Probably was. Um, hmm. Maybe not. Maybe not. Peter Mitchell did his work in the 1960s, and I am a child of the 60s, born in 1961 myself. So this axis over here represents the amount of energy an electron has. The Z scheme allows you to follow the gain and loss of electrons as they get boosted in energy and then do work. So light drives electron boosting from photosystem two, which you remember happens first. Water gets split. That's what we see over here. And that electron goes, bam, way up high in energy level to this primary electron acceptor over here. Once it's at the primary electron acceptor, it finds its way to an electron transport chain. And the flow of electrons, I'm indicating that by E minus electron flow. E minus is my shorthand for uh, electrons. Well, the flow of electrons powers the synthesis of ATP from ADP and phosphate. I'm not showing the details here because that's not what this diagram is all about. But the basic idea is that this electron loses energy. Why? It's doing work. It's Again, the battery's going from charged to uncharged, though that more applies to NADPH than it does to electrons in and of themselves. This electron arrives at Photosystem one, pretty much low energy, but light again boosts these chlorophylls over here. And these electrons replace the chlorophyll from P700 that's going to get boosted, boosted, boosted. And it's going to go to another electron transport chain. It'll flow to NADP plus reductase, which will use that flow of electrons to reduce. NADP plus, grabbing a hydrogen, making it into that mobile electron carrier, NADPH, which is going to provide us with reducing power during the Calvin cycle. And that's what we're going to talk about now. Photosynthesis, let's move it into part three. That was just a combined parts one and two. That's the Calvin cycle. Before we do that, I just want to again remind you how you can supercharge your learning by signing up for a free trial on learn-biology.com slash AP Biology. If you just went to learn-biology.com, you'd hit the student button and then you could get yourself a free trial. But let's go like this. And that's going to take us to the website. And let's go full screen. And here you can see um, our landing page. And on our landing page, you know, it tells you the great story of what our website does. You can sign up for a free trial. But I think that what I would rather have you do is this. I mean, do that. Sign up for a free trial. It's absolutely what I want you to do. But what I want to do right now is I want to just take you on a little tour. So here's how we get to the main menu of learn-biology.com. Here's the website. Um, you could also sign up for a free trial over here. But if you look at this courses menu, AP Bio version 2.0, that's our state of the art, ultra up to date, constantly fixed and refined version of AP 
biology. By the way, it's endorsed by the college board as a textbook alternative. So like, for example, if your teacher was using Campbell biology and they thought, why would I use such an old fashioned and outmoded way of learning when I could be using learn-biology.com, the college board would be thrilled with that. I don't really know that they'd be thrilled. I'd be thrilled with it. They probably would just be like, oh, okay, that's fine. Um, because it is fine. Um, and that's been widely communicated to teachers. Tell your teacher, use learn-biology.com. This is our main menu for AP Biology and Unit 3 Photosynthesis. Unit 3 Cellular Energetics includes photosynthesis. Let's go there. And this includes all the topics in photosynthesis, in uh, cellular respiration. The way that I taught, I always did cellular respiration first, photosynthesis second. So that's the order here. But you can do it in either order. And, um, you know, let's say that you wanted to review the light reactions. Click over there. And how does the thing work? Well, you'd read a little bit. Oh, here's stuff about the light reactions, excuse me, the organization of the thylakoid membrane, here's chlorophyll, here's photo excitation, here's photosystem, here's a video that'll help you learn this stuff. And then after you've read, it's time to interact. So let's go like this. And okay, so this is um, a diagram where you, you have to kind of drag to get the right answer. Let's just see if I can do this. ATP synthesis, it's happening over here. Um, let's go proton pump, that's proton pump. Over here, thylakoid membrane is this over here. That's kind of hard to see. Electron flow is being represented by this, probably over here. Yeah, now what would happen if I wasn't the creator of this thing and I got one wrong? So if I put this, up here, well, you'd see it wouldn't stick. And you're being told, that's not correct, please try again. So, oh, what, what did I mean by that? Water splitting, that happens over here, yay. So proton accumulation is happening down here. Reduction is happening over here, uh, which is the stroma, the stroma is this over here, come on. Yeah, I got it. An electron flow is got that over there. Oh, that's also electron flow. All right. So next question. Here's more label diagrams. I don't want to show you any more label diagrams because you get how they work. But again, think about how well you would know these diagrams if you had to label them with the kind of corrective feedback that you just saw. Here's a reading about the Z scheme. And here's a quiz. So in the diagram below, photosystem one, oh, what is that? That's got to be a letter. Oh, fantastic. But what if I, oh, this is another big labeling thing. I don't want to do that right now. How about this down here? Let's do this quiz. Which number or letter indicates the reaction that's the source of all the oxygen in our atmosphere? That's got to be K over here. What if I got it wrong? Uh, which number letter indicates the electron transport chain that powers proton pumping from the stroma to the thylakoid space? Think through the answer with me. Stroma to the thylakoid space, that's got to be at C. But what if I didn't know it? What if I got confused and I put I over here? I'd get a hint. Look for an hour that shows a proton moving from the stroma at one to the thylakoid space. Now find the hour that indicates the electron flow that powers that. So again, imagine how much you would learn if you got feedback like that. And, you know, I'm sorry that I didn't make this a little bit bigger and easier for you to follow. So that's all I really wanted to show you. Interact, learn, crush AP Biology. That happens by signing up for a free trial. And then, of course, buying a subscription for learn-biology.com. Is it expensive? Are you kidding me? $24.95 a month. It's it might be something for some families. And if it is something for your families, let me know. But if it's not something, then what could be a better use of $24.95? Because you get knowledge. And what is better than knowledge? What is better than learning? And what's going to feel better than 
crushing it on the AP bio exam in May. Let me tell you something. It's not that far from now. So you want to start today. You want to start building up your capacity. And I'll just show you one more thing. If we go up here all the way to the top, click AP bio review. I've got over 400 flashcards that you can use to learn AP biology. I've got over 450 multiple choice questions, each one of which is giving you specific corrective feedback or praise, depending on whether you get it right or wrong. All right. If you have any questions, ask me at any time. But let's go on and let's learn about learn-biology.com. There we go. Sign up for a free trial. Let's learn more. So Calvin cycle, three phases. The Calvin cycle cycle's got three phases. I just wrote a song about that. There's the carbon fixation phase, energy investment and harvest phase, and the regeneration of RUBP. What happens during carbon fixation? We're actually going to run through this twice. One is, I wouldn't be correct to call it a big picture view, but one is more conceptual. And then we'll sort of run through it almost atom by atom, or at least carbon atom by carbon atom. Take a little sip. Notice my science music videos cup. You can get it through YouTube. It's kind of fun. Um, so during the carbon fixation phase, carbon dioxide over here, so CO2, is combined with this molecule here, RUBP. RUBP stands for ribulose bisphosphate. Don't really think you need to know it. Just remember RUBP. It's a five-carbon molecule. The reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme Rubisco. And fun fact, Rubisco is probably the most abundant protein on planet Earth because it's in the stroma of every chloroplast in every plant cell that's involved in photosynthesis, so every leaf. Um, it's in algae. It's even in cyanobacteria, the blue green, they're not algae, blue-green bacteria that are the essentially independent ancestors of chloroplasts. Five carbons here, one carbon here. The six-carbon product that you'd expect doesn't show up. It's incredibly unstable. It's never been isolated. It immediately falls apart into two three-carbon molecules. And I know it says six over here. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So that's what happens during the carbon fixation phase. Why is it carbon fixation? Because carbon goes from being a gas in the atmosphere to being uh, essentially almost a carbohydrate. It's just a step away. Let's continue. Describe what happens during the energy investment and harvest phase of the Calvin cycle. This was carbon fixation, this is energy investment, and this is the last phase, regeneration of RUBP. This three carbon product is reduced. So in other words, it gets electron energy and it gets a hydrogen. Where does it get it from? From NADPH, which came out of the light reaction. As I told you, NADPH provides reducing power. So what we're doing is we're reducing carbon dioxide to create carbohydrate. The reduction happens over here in this phase of the reaction. And the molecule is also phosphorylated. There's a lot of complication here. There's an adding a phosphate. There's a loss of a phosphate. But the big picture for you as an AP biology student is that this three carbon product receives energy from the light reactions, creating a harvestable form. That harvestable form is glyceraldehyde three phosphate. If it doesn't sound familiar, that will sound familiar because glyceraldehyde three phosphate or G3P shows up in glycolysis. Um, it's a key intermediate in that reaction. So um, we have a phosphorylation, we have a reduction, we wind up with G3P, and G3P can be harvested from the cycle, pulled out of the cycle.
there's no violation of the law of conservation of matter. We're pulling matter out, but we pulled matter in over here during the carbon fixation phase. This molecule, that is sort of the ancestor of the molecules that make up you because you're made of amino acids and nucleotides and things like that. And Hero Gamer cannot explain photosynthesis. Hero Gamer, I've been explaining photosynthesis for 50 minutes. I need a more specific question than that, but I'm working on the light reactions right now. Maybe if you can break it down to something more specific, I can do it again. But I do want to tell you how happy I am that you decided to join us. Thanks a lot. So here we are with G3P, that's one of the harvestable products. And now we're gonna move into the last phase of the Calvin cycle. That's the rearrangement of this three carbon molecule into this five carbon molecule. Now, I wanna pause and run through the whole thing. And Hero Gamer, maybe this will work for you as a re-explanation of the Calvin cycle of photosynthesis. So here's the main thing that I want you to know. We've got to obey the law of conservation of matter. So let's imagine that there are three molecules of RUBP over here. That's three five carbon molecules. Each of these black dots is a carbon. So we've got 15 molecules of carbon over here with hydrogens and oxygen attached. And uh, here's a phosphate group. That's REBP, 15 carbon atoms in three REBPs. In the carbon fixation phase, three carbon dioxides come in. And those carbon dioxides are attached to each one of these REBPs. And we have now 18 carbons, three, plus 15 equals 18. But there's no six carbon molecule that persists. Instead, it falls apart into three carbon molecules and we're gonna keep our numbers the same. 18 carbons, well, six times three, 18 carbons. So we had 15, we pulled in three, we've got 18 over here and the meaning of phospholipids, hero gamer. Phospholipids are the molecules that make up cell membranes. They uh, have a, a hydrophobic side and a hydrophilic side. And Hero Gamer, if you hang out, maybe I can show you something on my website where you can learn that. So I'm just gonna go through this explanation. And when I get to the end, I'll go back to the website and I'll show you where you can learn that because I've got great stuff on learn-biology.com. So let's get back to it. We've got 18 carbons over here. In the energy investment and harvest phase, we're not gonna add more carbons. No carbons come in. What we're doing is we're phosphorylating over here, we're reducing over here, and over here, if you add up five of these plus one of these, we have still 18 carbons. We had 18 over here, we have 18 over here. It's all good, law of conservation of matter. But what the cell does is it pulls out, it harvests one of these G3Ps, well, that leaves us with five three carbon molecules. Five times three is 15. REBP is also 15 carbons. So what happens in the last phase of the Calvin cycle is th these five G3Ps get rearranged into three REBPs. In order to do that, it takes some energy. Where does that energy come from? From ATP. Where did that ATP come from? From the light reactions of photosynthesis. That's what this phosphorylation that I just mentioned. And note that RUBP is one of the two substrates during carbon fixation. The other one is carbon dioxide. Congratulations. For those of you who have been with me from the start of this, we have just marched through some incredibly difficult material. What I want to do right now is first of all say, holy cow, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on this review. It's 7.57 right now, so we're just about at an hour. This was super, super fun. I wanna thank uh, the folks who showed up in the comments. 
Ethan and Sky and Momo and Hero Gamer. Thank you so much for joining me. Hero Gamer, I'm going to show you something about how to learn about phospholipids in a minute. And in order to do that, I'm just going to jump back here. Here we go. So Hero Gamer, do this. Go to learn-biology.com. Here, if you just type learn-biology.com, it's up here, learn-biology.com, you go to my website. Go to courses, go to AP Bio version 2.0. What you're interested in learning about is cell structure and function. And if you go to membrane structure, There are two things. First of all, I have a video that explains how phospholipids work, but then I have this little tutorial also. So Hero Gamer, you're going to read this, and then you're going to take this quiz. Now, what I am going to want you to do is sign up for a free trial. Um, you're going to have to ask your mom or dad for their credit card because you need a credit card to get the free trial. But you don't get charged for two weeks. So I think you'll see that you will learn so much about phospholipids and pretty much about everything else in biology that is going to completely change your game in your biology class. So Hero Gamer, can you give me? Oh, fantastic. Thanks for the feedback. So again, you're going to learn-biology.com slash AP Biology. Let me see if I can just take you there right now. Yeah, go to learn-biology.com slash AP Biology and click that free trial button. You'll see the terms of the agreement, no charge, and you'll learn so much. I want to say thank you. So I'm going to say thank you to all the people who joined me tonight. This was super, super fun for me. I hope you learned a lot. Um, tell your friends, tell your teachers. Um, all I really want to do is teach biology, and uh, that's what I get to do at these live review sessions. And you folks are all super, super impressive because, I mean, AP Bio exam is still a little ways off, right, over two months. But you're here. You're reviewing. You're a superhero. You're going to get a five if you study and if you use learn-biology.com, or, you know, a lot of people get fives without using learn-biology.com. So I'm going to say good night. I want to thank you so much for joining me. Please have a great night. Good luck. Look for my next amount announcement about my next stream. And uh, I'm hoping that this time works for you and uh, we'll get more and more people joining us. Thank you so, so much.